need your favorite bets slash DFS plays in the following categories on tonight's MLB slate. So Matt, first base is a DFS pitcher that you want to roster. Who are you going to go with? So this is a slate with a lot of really good pitchers. And I think that the way that this is going to shake out in terms of what the field is doing is that you either have Scherzer or Sale or maybe even you Darvish at the high end. And then you see a lot of people paying down to Eliezer Hernandez or maybe even Yusei Kikuchi. And I think Patrick Corbin kind of goes overlooked in the middle there. He hasn't really had a good season, but he also has had some pretty tough context where he's pitching in Washington, which especially in the summer is a really tough place to pitch. And he's had a recent stretch where he faced the Braves, both home and on the road. Same for the Phillies, Baltimore in Baltimore. So tough hitting environment there. The Padres, the Dodgers. I mean, it's been a really hard schedule. He finally got a break last time out where he got to go in Milwaukee, which probably is a neutral matchup still. But he actually had a good start there because it was the one matchup recently where it wasn't actually a negative on balance. Um, So I think Corbin going into Miami against the Marlins, really good pitching environment, really bad offense. Um, and I think the $8,200 price tag keeps him relatively low owned. Um, so he's probably my favorite pitcher on the whole slate. All right, Paul, a lot of guys to choose from. Who are you going with? You know what, there, Jesse, there are three pitchers on today's slate who are coming off IL stints. I'm going to fade all three of them. That's Rodon, Darvish, and Eflin off my list of consideration. Once I eliminate them and a host of others who have tough matchups with some other top options facing one another, I land on two choices. Chris Sale might be a tempting option after watching his first two starts this season, but he has had a bad history against the righty power bats in the Twins lineup. So he gets an X from me today, despite the Twins throwing a bullpen day at the Bo Sox. I land on Alex Wood of the Giants, in fact, for $8,700 in a matchup against Carlos Carrasco and the Mets. Woods come, Wood comes into this game with a 65 to 16 strikeout to walk ratio in his last 54 innings pitch. That's pretty dominant. The Dodgers on a, on a roll with nine wins in their last 10 while the Mets are going the other way in uh, dog days of summer with a two and eight mark in the last 10. I think the LA offense will have a field day against Carrasco who will be making his sixth appearance of the season and has not distinguished himself at all in pitching to an 882 ERA with the numbers like that. He should be on the Orioles pitching staff along with giving up five homers and an opposing batting average of 319 over his 16 and a third innings pitch this season. All right, Eric, which DFS pitcher are you going to be going with? I do really like Alex Wood. He's on my short list, but I think I'm fine just paying up for Chris Sale, uh, just over 10000 I don't care too much about specific batter versus pitcher histories. The sample size there is always tiny. And what matters way more for me is just how talented we know Sale is and just not actually really all that worried about him coming off of Tommy John surgery. Um, it was excellent in his first two starts, only five innings in each, and – He did only go 71 pitches in his last start, so I doubt he passes 90 here, although he did throw uh, 89 in his first start. Uh, So, you know, he's he's been basically at that level before. I think 90 pitches is enough to get elite level performance from somebody as good as Sale. Uh, He's just been excellent since he's returned, striking out nearly a third of opposing batters while issuing just a single walk across his two starts. Also keeping the ball on the ground very well, 56% ground ball rate. So he looks absolutely like Chris Sale. I have no real worries other than, again, the workload. But I think five innings, 90 pitches is enough uh, to justify that price. All right, let's move on to second base and a DFS hitter that you want to roster this evening, Paul. Among the top hitters, I think Jose Ramirez for 5900 bucks is the most effective use of big spending in DFS tonight, Jesse. He's a power bat who's cooking of late with 13 hits, 10 of them for extra bases and an OPS of 1.106 in his last 43 at-bats. The switch hitter faces Jordan Lyles, who's been a punching bag in allowing 31 homers in 138 innings pitched, which goes a long way to explaining a pretty terrible 534 ERA on the season. Another big power bat that I like tonight is Sal Perez in a matchup against Seattle's Yusei Kukuchi. Uh, Perez is enjoying a career-best campaign in terms of the power numbers, which include four of his last 30 four of his home 34 home runs in his last 10 games he gets the platoon edge against the pitcher who's allowed 13 homers and a 540 era in his last 51 and two-thirds innings pitch his price tag's 5500 bucks i lean on the tail of good hitting beating bad pitching in these matchups tonight all right eric which hitter do you like tonight yeah i'm liking Giancarlo stanton at 4200 i just don't know why he's this affordable. I mean, we know how good he is. The main issue with Stanton is that he's not always healthy, but 
for daily fantasy purposes, as long as he's healthy tonight, uh, he's, I think, much more than a 4,200 uh, level hitter. Uh, he's hitting as well as you want right now over his last 13 games. He's gone hitless just once. He's hitting 318, uh, WRC plus of 205 over that stretch. Five homers, 11 RBI in those 13 games. Uh, if you back up, look at his season overall, uh, he doesn't have the big strikeout concerns that he has sometimes uh, above average strikeout rate of 27.3 percent is totally fine mark it's actually his lowest since he left miami lowest since 2017. he's hitting the ball as hard as ever too 55.6 percent hard hit rate is a career high good for fourth in the league he's facing james caprillion who does have a 325 era but that's uh, well better than what most of the era estimators peg him at He's fine, uh, basically league average strikeout and walk rates, but doesn't keep the ball on the ground all that well, just a 36.4% ground ball rate, which is exactly what I'm looking for uh, when trying to select some sluggers. Um, I want a guy who's going to give up balls in the air, and when Stanton hits it in the air, it goes a long way. All right, DFS hitter that you like for this evening, Matt? I think it's really hard on this slate to find a great option that isn't also going to be popular in GPPs. So you have the Boston expensive bats and the Cleveland expensive bats. And I think the ownership gets to both of them pretty significantly. Probably the same for St. Louis and San Francisco too. So everyone else should be pretty contrarian. I just don't think there are a lot of great options elsewhere. But the player I think I like the most is, is Juan Soto. And it has a lot to do with who he's facing. Eliezer Hernandez is a pretty good pitcher I think and it's in Miami so he should be able to do well but I think he's just going to carry too much ownership for the quality of pitcher that he is and he is pretty inconsistent at least throughout his early career so Soto definitely has the upside and I just think he goes way overlooked where you see most of the ownership for hitters that cost around 5k to 6k most of those players are going to come from Cleveland Boston St. Louis um I, I just don't think that Soto is popular in any way, and it's actually a decent spot for him, and he's obviously a great hitter. So I think as a contrarian leverage point, he's the guy to go to for this slate. All right, Eric, third base is a DFS value that you're going with. Yeah, Zach Gallon at 7,200. That's just too cheap for a guy of his talent level. Uh, I know he's not having his best season, 459 ERA on the year in a season that's been disrupted by injuries and a forearm issue in March, an elbow in May, a hamstring in July. So really, really not his year. Um, but the talent's still there. If you look at his last seven starts since his return from his latest of his three trips to the injured list, as a 503 ERA, uh, but some of the ERA estimators particularly uh, XFIP is a full run and a half better than that, almost at 362. And that just looks at strikeout rate, ground ball rate, and walk rate, the things pitchers have most direct control over, and he seems fine. Um, basically, league average in walks and grounders with a 28.1% strikeout rate over that seven-start stretch. So I think even if this is in full peak gallon, it's not that far from it. Uh, he's facing a Phillies team that's been middle of the pack or even slightly worse I know it's a hitter-friendly park there, but Gallon is talented enough and the Phillies have been shaky enough that 7,200, that's just too cheap for a guy who had an ERA of 278 over his first two seasons in the league. All right, Matt, DFS value, where are you going for that? It's funny, Eric and Paul both mentioned uh, the sides of this game that I'm really considering. So I don't care too much about the Twins history versus Chris Sale, but I actually do like this spot a lot for many of their hitters. It comes down to a couple things. Chris Sale hasn't been going that deep in games, so they may only have to face Sale for five of the six innings. And then Boston's bullpen has really, really struggled lately. So even if Sale is decent, you have the Twins going against some underperforming relievers, at least of late. But the Twins are also really underpriced. Josh Donaldson's 3,300. Jorge Polanco's 3,400. Mitch Garver's 3,700. I think there is a lot of upside for these guys. And if Chris Sale is one of the two or three most popular pitchers tonight, then you get a lot of leverage with this stack, too. So I just don't think anyone's playing the Twins. And I think the best single value from this team is probably Donaldson at 3,300. But I think it's a strong spot for a lot of these guys across the board. All right, Paul, where are you finding DFS value? 
I love the call on Don Donaldson. I certainly didn't expect the price tag of $3,300 going into today's card. I mentioned earlier that Sale has had issues with some of the Twins power bats, and you just heard it again from the other guys. Well, Donaldson is at the head of this class with a 10 for 33 history in head-to-head -head play. I do value that, uh, contrary to what Eric said, but that's what makes this panel kind of fun. We can ag agree to disagree here. He has five homers and 11 ribbies in that sample size. That's significant enough for me. Add that to the fact that Donaldson comes into this tilt on a roll, too, having home Homer's having hit a homer last night, and he loves hitting in Boston. He's 13 for 40, his last 43 with three dingers and nine RBIs as well in his last uh, 43 at bats, as I say. So uh, I think there's lots to like there. And uh, another bat that I like is Nick Castellanos, another power bat uh, for 4,300 bucks in today's matchup against Brett Anderson and the Brewers. He gets the platoon edge and has a strong head to head history, eight for 24 in that sample size. And Castellanos is in the middle of a career best season and comes into this game on a heater with 13 hits, including three homers in his last 10 games as part of a 1038 OPS in that stretch. All right, take us home with a game total that you like, Matt. I really don't love that much tonight, but I do have a lean, and I think that there could be more offensive upside in this, which normally would be a premier matchup between you Darvish and Max Scherzer. It's just that the offenses on both of these teams are good enough that seven and a half runs seems low to me. Um, Scherzer and Darvish are both really, really good pitchers in terms of strikeouts, and they're both good pitchers overall, but they do both give up home runs, and there are just so many power hitters on both of these sides of the game. So I think Fernando Tatis for DFS could be a contrarian play, but even for just betting the total here, um, maybe an alternate run line or alternate total is the way to go because this could definitely be a one nothing game where both pitchers are great. But I just think like there's enough power across the board with Max Muncy and then Trey Turner, Corey Seager, and the list goes on and on. Fernando Tatis Jr., Manny Machado, that I think there's a really wide range of outcomes with this game. So I would not be surprised to see only a couple runs, but I also wouldn't be surprised to see a bunch of runs either. Paul, a game total that you're targeting. You know what? Let's get the easy one out of the way. I love a good pitching duel, and I just watched three in a row between the Sox and the Jays. Tonight's another tasty matchup between Hyunjin Ryu and Carlos Rodon, and also features two sputtering offenses. I'll take a look at the underside and will, in fact, find value in that alternate run total that uh, Matt suggested might apply for his game. I go to the underside of 6.5 runs for a 1 175 payoff. And then, well, lightning struck in Baltimore last night as the Orioles won for the first time since, let me get this right, the Sahara was a forest. Let me get that one out of the way. And then the Angels and Orioles combined for 16 runs yesterday. I see them approaching that same total in a matchup that features Jaime Barria, who has been knocked around early and often giving up 13 hits and eight runs in his last two short starts, totaling five innings, while the Orioles counter with Keegan Allen, who is the poster boy for the kind of year it's been for the O's with a 792 ERA and an 0 8 record in 63.2 innings pitched. I will take the alternate total run bet of over 11 and a half runs for plus 130. All right, Eric, which game total are you targeting? Yeah, I'm going back to the same one as Matt, but I'll take the other side here. I'll go under even that low under of seven and a half between the Dodgers and the Padres. Yes, the lineups are great. The teams are averaging 9.8 runs per game combined, but we just saw last night what can happen when you get two offenses this good against two excellent pitchers in Walker Buehler and Blake Snell. It was 1-1 through 14 innings. Uh, obviously, if this game is tied forever and they start getting free runs from uh, the very strange extra inning rules that hopefully we're almost done with. Uh, maybe this ends up on the over, but these pitchers are just too good. Uh, Max Scherzer, he's given up two or fewer runs in 16 of his last 18 starts. He's as good as ever this year, 34.4% strikeout rate against just a 6.2% walk rate. He does have a low ground ball rate, so that is going to lead to some homers. And so if this hits the over, it's because, you know, a couple of those fly balls uh, do clear the fence instead of dying on the warning track. I am actually pretty confident in you, Darvish, even though he's been somewhat shaky uh, in terms of ERA lately, and he's just coming back from a brief absence due to a tight lower back. That doesn't seem like a major injury to me. And even though he has a 697 ERA in his last four starts, it's 30 strikeouts against four walks with an above average ground ball rate. That's not the numbers of a guy who's actually struggling. It's the numbers of a guy who's ran into a bit of bad luck. So I think these pitchers are just too good. Maybe they give up, you know, a couple homers and we hit the over. It's not a hard over to hit, but I think good pitching beats good hitting tonight, just like it did for um, most of last night's game.